Hi y'all, this is Larry from Deep South Texas. It's time to take a look at the spring garden. It's the uh, middle of March here and the garden is beautiful. Let's take a look. The cabbages that were uh, planted in November, they look, uh, they're ready to harvest. They're ready to harvest. So we have uh, Dutch flathead cabbage here and uh, Bonnie's best in that row. So we'll, uh, we'll be harvesting these. We've harvested a few right along as we need them, but uh, the rest of these need to come out and uh, be doing that. I'll actually uh, harvest one or two at the end of this video to show you how they look. I have uh, planted some sweet potatoes in this space down here hoping to grow slips for later on and when they do come up and the cabbages are gone they'll be uh, we'll be growing sweet potatoes in this bed the onions that uh, I planted from seed the first week of November they're looking good looking good Got a full bed of onions. They're starting to fat, fatten up a little bit. Looking forward to that. The carrots that I planted uh, the middle of November, they're, uh, I think they're ready to harvest too. We'll, uh, we'll pull up a couple here at the end of this video to see what they look like, but I think they're gonna look good. And the potatoes survive the polar vortex and uh, they're growing. Not quite ready to harvest these yet, but uh, they're looking pretty good. The tomatoes that I had planted before the polar vortex all froze. So luckily I had more coming on and uh, they've been planted now. These. Uh, these right here are red Siberians. They're looking pretty good. Originally, I had this uh, this bed planted with um, beefsteak, and I didn't have very many beefsteaks left, so I only have four of them, and, and three of them are doing real well. One of my favorite tomatoes is uh, the Biltmore. It's a hybrid, but I've had uh, a couple years where they've just done exceptionally well down here in deep south Texas and uh, I have six of them planted here so looking looking good and more more tomatoes planted in this bed these uh, these here in front are Cherokee purples I really really enjoy those tomatoes and then uh, on the other side of the bed are some indigos and they're all looking good right now and some more tomatoes over in this bed. I don't know what they are. <laughs> the seed was saved from last year, but it didn't get labeled. So uh, kind of going to be a surprise. But the fact that I saved the seeds makes me think that I must have thought the tomatoes were, were worth it. And even though I don't know what they are yet, as they get bigger, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. The parsley is doing well, as is the cilantro and chives and the celery. I had to trim it back a little bit, but it's uh, it's looking good as well. And the pole beans, they're looking good. So they all froze in the polar vortex, but I've replanted them and. Uh, for the most part, they look pretty good. I've got uh, three containers down on this end that look pretty sick. I think um, after I replanted, something came along and ate those, and I suspect it's one of my chickens. I've got one chicken that can get over the fences and get back here in the garden, and uh, <laughs> he does his best to uh, make life rough for me. So I'm giving peppers another go this year. I haven't had a lot of luck growing peppers down here in deep south Texas, but uh, this year I have several varieties. 
So these four here are California Wonders. It's a, it's a green pepper, a green bell pepper, so I'm hoping those do well. Then these four here are Marconis, and uh, they're, looking, they're looking good. I had one Marconi plant last year, and it did okay, and these, these seeds came from that plant, so. And then of course, we need to grow some jalapenos down here in deep south Texas, so these five are jalapenos. And in addition to those, we have uh, a couple barrels of uh, paprika peppers. I've never grown these before, but um, we'll see how they do. And I also have uh, two barrels with big Jim peppers. So these should get to be uh, rather large peppers. And I like, to, uh, I like to cook with them. They're not real hot, but they're hot. So <laughs> I like using them. Again, I haven't had much luck growing them down here in deep south Texas, but uh, we're going to give it another try this year. And a couple plebanos in, in this pot. Um, I've tried, this is my third year now. I've, I've never had any luck. The plants grow real well, but I really don't get peppers. So we're uh, give it one more try to see if I can get a plebanos. So I'm seeing signs that at least some of my Moringa trees have survived. So we have some new growth on a couple of them. Um, hopefully more will come through. But uh, one of the things I'll be doing this year is planting some Moringa seeds to replace any of the trees that didn't make it. And the aloe vera plant did uh, did survive the polar vortex. I had to trim back a lot of leaves that were frozen off, but uh, the plant has survived, so that's good news. It looks like the uh, citrus tree, this is the um, navel orange tree, did survive. I'm seeing something that looks like uh, buds and flowers forming. <laughs> I wasn't ex wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting any fruit this year after that cold snap, but uh, looks like uh, looks like something might happen here. I've been working on the other half of my garden. Um, it's not quite ready yet, but uh, I need to plant. Uh, I need to get my sweet corn planted in the ground. So we'll be working on this the rest of this week, getting this bed ready for sweet corn. I planted some uh, some cherry tomatoes over here, and I've got squash planted in this bed. So I've got yellow straight neck squash here. It's not up yet, and butternut squash there. So we got a summer squash and a winter squash. My wife says I'm crazy for doing that, but uh, what do you think? <laughs> I think it'll be okay. Well, let's harvest a couple cabbages and, and some carrots and see what they look like. First, let's harvest one of these uh, Dutch flathead cabbages. I got my uh, trusty rusty knife, my garden knife. Let's uh, cut it off. Take off some of these outside leaves. The chickens love this stuff. <laughs> so that looks like a pretty nice head of cabbage. Now let's, uh, let's move over and get one of Bonnie's Best. So overall, I don't think uh, these Bonnie's Best grew as, as large as the, uh, as the others, but they still look like nice cabbages and uh, a pretty good size for my family. And 
there it is. Another nice, very tight, very hard, uh, hard cabbage. Looking good. So I think almost all of these uh, carrots are ready to harvest, but let's see if we can find a few good ones for the camera. <laughs> Let's see. That one looks pretty nice. Another nice one, nice size carrot. These are, um, well, I forget the name. I'll try to remember here in a minute. There's a big fat one. Oh, there's one that split into three. <laughs> and another nice carrot. All in all, pretty happy. You pulled up a small one with that one, but uh, that's okay. Pretty good carrots. They're uh, Danvers half long is what they are. So pretty happy with that. Let's uh, let's wash them off and take another look. So there are the carrots. They came out uh, real well. I don't know how long these carrots last us. They don't last us all year, but. Uh, Quite a while, maybe uh, six months at least. Pretty happy with that crop. Well, I think the garden is looking great here in March and uh, it will only continue to look better for the next uh, couple months. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it that thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.